Professor Froney, or whatever your real name is, I'm interested in a print. A certain film you had made. Mister, I don't know who you are, what you're talking about. Let me go! Let me go! You see that car over there? He's from the Mozart. Now you either talk to me or I take you to him. Which do you want? Both sides refuse to recognize the legitimate rights of each other. Both sides are using extremists as an excuse to avoid dealing with each other. This country cannot live forever in a state of armed siege. Until the Palestinian problem is solved... Your own wife was almost killed! There will always be a minority of extremists. Your government leaders refuse to recognize the Palestinians as an independent entity. Their leaders refuse to talk to you. So a new war is inevitable. Okay, so we fight them again. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Chances are you win. But the price is another 2,000 dead. Will that prove anything that four previous wars have failed to do? We had Saddam's third army surrounded when you forced us into the ceasefire. Yeah. 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 You know as well as I that the superpowers will never let you win a decisive victory. Why don't you put out a peace plan of your own? With new borders that'll satisfy all parties. The PLO refuses to recognize Israel's right to exist. They also massacre children. Have you forgotten the slaughter of our assets in Munich? No, I have not forgotten. But in order to achieve a real peace, you may have to give something up. You mean give back land that we have conquered? <laughs> we'll do that when America gives back occupied territory, like, say, Texas back to Mexico. <laughs> I'm not naive enough to believe that all these problems can be solved immediately. It will take time. But I do believe that when reasonable people sit down with each other, that reason will prevail. Look, you are all students. Did it ever occur to you to arrange a discussion with the students of Birzeit, the Palestinian University? He's right! Oh. He's, he's, he's right! We should be with him! He's the only one both together for a meeting. Would you agree to talk? They won't talk peace with us! All right, start talking. I'm a film editor. When I was at the lab, I saw that horrible movie. I was shocked when I recognized the ambassador's And wife. then what did you do? I told Mr. Gershuni. Who? Zeb Gershuni, my Zeb producer. Gershuni. Take me to him. Oh, no, I can't. They're ruthless. You don't know You them. said they. Shimon, his partner. Shimon. Please, can I go now? Where is the friend? I don't know. Oh, please, let me go. Shimon and Zeb are very dangerous. If they find out I told anyone, they'll kill me. They'll never find you in America. You mean, you'd help me get to America? It depends on you. I could arrange for a ticket to the city of your choice, a visa to stay as long as you like, and, of course, money for your living expenses. Hmm? I'll tell you all I can. Good. Taxi! And then... 
Then there is this other man. What other man? He came from Budapest. Very strange man, very quiet. He calls himself Stone. I had to get him into the party the other night. Why? I had to point out the ambassador. That's Shimon, by the table in the corner. And that's his partner, Zeb. They own this restaurant. They have the fingers into everything. Mm -hmm. All right, driver, U.S. Embassy. Let's get your passport, huh? Blown it. Should have never told Stone about the film. Don't worry. There is a simpler fish to fry than the ambassador. Arab businessman with wife and a family should be willing to pay only half a million. Where and when? Tomorrow. You will be informed. Sleep well. This is incredible. You always could pick him. Yes, Deborah, who is it now? All right, put her on. This says Hashimi's been a member of one terrorist group or another since he was 15. It also says he speaks five different languages, found time to graduate from Rome University, and is a very shrewd businessman. I'd like to meet him. Uh, yes, Mr. Roney, what can I do for you? Yes, a wife and four kids. You didn't exactly give him all the grisly details, either. I told him I was married. What? Tonight? No, 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 that's impossible. What's that? What are we gonna do? When in doubt. Punt, will you be serious? All right, but please come right away. It's very late. I've been serious all my life. I have seriously made money. I have seriously tried to solve the problems in the Middle East. I have seriously fucked up my marriage. Well, you had some strong support there. And your theory is... That you are using Mrs. Hecker as a go-between in the negotiations between you and the Palestinians? My editor is prepared to go with the story, complete with the pictures. Ms. Aharoni, you are obviously very ambitious and very imaginative, but you're wrong. You'd be doing the cause of peace a great disservice by publishing these fantasies. And your political career back in Texas? What would these fantasies do to it? I think you'd better leave. If your wife was not acting as a go-between for you, then what was she doing at that Arab cafe waiting for a well-known Palestinian? Mike. Rachel? You married? No. Got a boyfriend? Not right now. Why not? Well, as the song says, a good man nowadays is hard to find. Well, I hope if you ever do find one, Nobody ever does to him what you're doing to mine. Don't know some 
Keep your hands on the table. What do you want? I've got a gun cocked. Oh. Ready to shoot your balls off. Oh. What do you want? Now, let's go for a nice, intimate chat, shall we? Oh. When did this happen? A few hours ago. Alex? I'm here, I think. I'm going to pay them. I have no choice. Wait a minute. The blackmailers contacted Mustafa. They won $500,000 from him. Call him back. I want a meeting with him tonight. Call him back, now. I just want to talk with him. Maybe they'll listen to him. Good evening, Ambassador Harker. Thank you for coming. I was curious. You don't look like an avenging husband. To seek vengeance, one must be victimized. I never allow that. I told Alex that I was ready to pay. Now that's not why I'm here at all. Then why? Mr. Hashimi, the Middle East is a powder keg. The only hope I can see is for young people to get together and begin a dialogue. Ambassador Harker, are you really as naive? as you would have me believe? Maybe. But it seems to me that if young people of both sides could start a movement toward unity, it just might be the beginning of a solution to the problems of the Middle East. I understand you lecture at the Palestinian University. Do you suppose you could get some of your students together for a meeting? Who with? The students from the Hebrew University. Alex said you were a tenacious bastard. Let us arrange it for tomorrow night, right here at Antipatrius. I'll bring as many students as I can. At a time when our recognition grows all over the world, there are some idiots among us still throwing bombs. <laughs> For the first time we are talking with the United States. So what happens? We almost kill the American ambassador's wife. Would my loyal and good friend feel this way if the ambassador's wife are not an intimate friend of his? Shimi, yes. you are an important and dedicated man. Your reputation is known throughout the whole Arab world. Did you ever consider that such a relationship could prove useful to us? Since I was 13, I devoted my life to our cause. So let's stop this nonsense about my personal life. 